All right. How many of y'all enjoyed Pastor Mauricio on last Sunday? Oh, that's my brother from another mother. Sorry, mama. I got two mamas. No, Pastor Mauricio, whenever I'm not here normally, I'm ministering at his church, and so I wanted to bring him. Pastor Kid and I did a wedding. Um, let me tell you, when you plant stuff in people's lives, don't ever think it doesn't matter. Amen? So last week, we did a wedding out of town. One of our young girls from our youth church, so this is back from 1998, uh, she called. She says, Pastor, I'm flying in from South Carolina, and I would like for you to marry us. I said, ooh, I don't do marriages on Sunday. She said, but I want to tell you something. She said, I'm getting married at 35 as a virgin. And she said, it's because of our youth church. We used to do a True Love Waits program she held it. You remember, Chris? She held it till she was 35 years old. I said, if you can wait that long, I can leave my church. <laughs> come on. Come on. I appreciate y'all letting me do that. And so we never thought way back then that anybody was really listening. We had a thousand teenagers in our youth church. And here she comes, and she honored God. So I appreciate it. Uh, lessons from the end. I watched it in the hotel room. Because uh, the wedding got pushed back, and that was so, so powerful. So let's give a big hand clap for Pastor Mauricio and his church and his wife, Miss Virginia. All right. Are y'all ready? All right. So um, how many are enjoying the series of Mechanics of Good and Evil, first of all? Because this, like, this is like a head twister. It's a head twister. And we don't have a lot of the words, and we don't have a way to think about some of these terms. So I know it's kind of hard to hear and kind of hard to listen to. But if you think about it, it really does explain everything. But the problem is we've been taught this way for so long. We've been using these words for so long. You tell little babies, hey, be a good kid. Hey, be a good baby. And the Bible says it's just hard. Jesus said no one is good but the Father. And so we've been stuck in the battle of good versus evil, but what we've been learning, if you're new, it's a false battle. It's a false equivalent, and I know this is hard to hear. It's a false equivalent because there is not good versus evil, and I know you've been conditioned to think that. There's only good and evil, both when it comes to how people are, lead to death, and the only other option is life. Yeah, I know. I know. I don't know what to tell you. The Bible tells us not to be good-driven, but to be life-driven. And see, you're struggling already because you don't know what to say. You don't know what to call it. So just stay with me, hang in there, and we're going to go for it today. So one of the reasons why you're quiet right now and I'm confused at looking at you is because we all have opinions and perspectives that are outside of the boundaries of the Word of God. All of us have opinions that are from the rearrangement that the devil has done. The devil has rearranged things. And all we know is the language of the rearrangement. Are y'all listening? That's all you know. It's all I know. It's like being born, if you were uh, uh, born in America and your parents are both American, they don't have other cultures or other nations involved, you probably only speak English. Then when you meet someone and that someone comes and speaks another language, you're looking and you don't have the ability to communicate because you're confused. Does this make sense? So part of what's wrong, Bernard, with this series and what's hard about this series is you and I don't have another language other than good versus evil. But the tree in the book of Genesis takes out that whole thinking. But the problem is we have a different, um, what's the word? We, We have a different way of thinking about things. Does that make sense? Why are y all looking like that? Okay, so here's the foundation for today. Let me pick the pace up. If it's not God, it's the devil. It's too simple. So repeat after me. If it's not God, it's the devil. 
You know why you're looking at me? Because we live in the middle. Your language is in the middle. Your thinking's in the middle. Your perspective, my perspective, is in the middle. The problem is there's no middle. Good to see you, Bobby. But the Catholic Church is like, oh, there's purgatory. Yeah, find it in the Scripture. There is not. When you take your last breath, you move. Are you? Okay, let me go. Let me keep going, Ashanti. There's only heaven and hell. And when you take your last breath, depending on your reservation, and Jesus is your travel agent, if you didn't call him, you don't get to go where he would love for you to go. So we live in the middle, and we've lost this concept. And I'm going to try today my best to bring it to you. Everybody repeat after me. If it's not God, it's the devil. Okay, now... One of the things I love about Jesus is he does improve himself. He don't have to come and prove himself. Because most of us are thinking, well, Jesus, you could just solve this if you would just appear right now in 2023. Then, watch this, Jennifer, we would believe you. With it. No, you wouldn't. Because the last time he appeared, he got killed. The thing about Jesus is not about him appearing. It's really not about him talking to you or me. It's about you and I looking at our life and making this decision, which is hard to make. It's either God or the devil. We want God to solve every single problem when we call on him, but we only call on him when there's a problem. That's not a good relationship. And we're going to talk about it again today. We're going to talk about communion because some of you are here today and you're going through some things. Some of you have been broken today. Some of you are depressed today. Some of you are confused today. Some of you are wondering what's going on today. And really there's no confusion. It's either God or the devil and that's it. But you live in the middle and you wonder why you're hurting. You wonder why things are not working. You wonder why so many uh, uh, pressures, Dana, are coming at you. It's because you haven't accepted the scriptural truth. It's either God or the devil. And so what we do is we land in the middle and just try to be good. You try to be good because your mama said be good, because your daddy said be good, because your teacher said be good. So you and I just want to be good. We don't want to be life driven because nobody's taught us those words. So here we go. Jesus said in John 14, 6, now watch, I am the, the, and the, say it again, I am the, I am the, and I am the. So watch this. Ready, Pastor Kendra? Anything else is lost, a lie, or death. It's scripture, Sean, and this is a backwards truth. What is a backwards truth? A backwards truth is this. You ready, Brian? Humans can't do this. Only God, because when God speaks, Matt, it is eternal. And when God says something, it lasts for all eternity. So the opposite of what he says is actually the opposite of what he says. When you and I talk, there's not a backwards truth because everything, Sean, you and I say is not truth. Jesus is not telling the truth. He is the truth, so the only thing, Mark, that can come out of him is truth. The devil is a liar, so the only thing that can come out of him is which are good. What did you say? There's always a good reason to do evil. Do y'all realize when you turn the news on, there are thousands of people in the street cheering for Hamas after Hamas slaughtered babies in cribs. And if you interview them, they will give you, are y'all listening today? They'll give you all the good reasons evil happened. 
I'm telling you, if you can understand this concept, it explains everything. Do you hear what I just said? They're giving you good reasons why they went in civilians. War has always been between soldiers. There have always been civilian casualties. This is the first time, really, well, not the first time, but the, in our lifetime, where soldiers have attacked unarmed civilians in their bed while they were asleep. But when you, when you interview all the supporters, the supporters give you all the good political reasons that this other group did evil. The Palestinians are trying to leave, and we need to pray for them too. They're trying to leave, but Hamas is not even letting them leave. So does Hamas really want to protect the people, or do they want to just annihilate God's people? But see, you can't discern it, and some of you can't even discern it because of your political leaning, because you've been set up, and you have been constructed into the construct of good versus evil. And it's not that. It's good and evil together and life on the other side. And that life is Jesus. He said, I'm the way, I'm the, and I'm the if you and I in our personal lives, if you and I in our daily lives don't, I'm going to break these words down in a minute. If you don't treat Jesus as the way, in the Greek it means the means to something, Nicole. If you and I don't know that Jesus is the actual means, Kelly, to the end, and we don't know that he is truth, he's not telling the truth, he can't lie, Jennifer, he is the truth, so when he talks, truth just flows from him. But you and I think we're smarter and live in any old kind of way, doing everything the Bible says don't do. Then you get attacked and you can't understand what happened. Here's what happened. You're lost. Because you've been fooled into thinking coming to church means everything is okay. But when we look at your daily time with God, your day. Your daily communion with God, your time with God without the pastor, it looks like this. But the attack looks like this. The evidence is right in front of you. But we don't want to receive it. Just like they didn't want to receive Jesus when he came. If he's the way, if he's the truth, and he's the life, if you don't accept that on a daily basis, if I don't accept it on a daily basis as the pastor, I will be lost, I will be living a lie, and stuff is going to die. Period. So here we go. The earth's original structure was arranged for life. Say life. This is pre-fall, and we're going to get into it today. Then Adam gave authority to the devil to do what? rearranged the arrangement and he rearranged it for death Jesus comes to do you understand that Jesus comes to bring the kingdom back to the rearrangement you and I are living in the matrix right now you and I are living in the rearrangement the struggle we're having is we only know the rearrangement we only know post fall what do you mean fall Kathy God walked with Adam and walked with Eve. We're going to talk about that in a minute. They had communion every day. Y'all got to hear me. There was no church in the garden because you didn't need church. You were connected to life directly. Y'all don't hear me talking to you. Church is a post-fall concept. So Jesus comes to rearrange the rearrangement from death back to life. You ready, Pastor? Here's the problem. Now, this is going to get deep today. Now, life is a choice you have to make when before it was the way. Doug, does this make sense? Life. I'm going to break it down in a minute. Life used to be the way. In the Greek, it means the means. Adam and Eve knew no other way. The tree of the knowledge, Miss Yolanda, of good and evil. Are y'all ready? 
introduced another way. <laughs> I can't wait to the end, Kendra. I got to say it now. It, this is the very last point on your outline. Okay. Don't confuse free will with choice. Uh, here come a hammer, Jennifer. <laughs> Woo! You and I were created with free will. But you didn't need it to choose. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil, not good versus evil, introduced two more choices. Okay. Life. Come here, Mike. Hurry, hurry, hurry. I'm trying to show you something. Because the hard part about preaching this stuff is stand right here with me. I can't preach just revelation. I have to go in, pull stuff out of you. Do you know if you want to get healthy, you have to detoxify your body first because your body's full of poison that go against what you're trying to do. Is somebody going to talk to me today? If you don't detox yourself, come on, that's why you evacuate every day after you eat. You have to get the poop out. If not, you're poopy. Okay? You have to get it out before you put new stuff in. Are y'all listening? Okay, so now what's hard and why you're staring at me like this, I got to go in that head and get the rearrangement out before I can put revelation in there. So watch this. This is Jesus. I am Adam. Okay, let's walk to the end. Look, just look, just watch. Just please look. Now this is going to be complicated, Mike. We're going to walk back. Where am I? Where am I? Okay, now watch this. I'm going to get even more complicated. You ready? This is really complicated. What is it called, Frank? Say it louder. Okay, you got to listen. If I have communion with God, are you watching? Watch. How can two walk together, Amos 3, 3, unless they be agreed? Now, are you ready? This is so deep, but it's so simple. You ready? It's either God or the devil. You ready, Lola? If I'm with him, I don't have to choose. You just read it the way. Way, odo in the Greek means means. So, so Watch. No, just watch. This is so complicated, ain't it? Watch. Which way should I go? There was a cartoon. Which way did he go? Which way did he go? <laughs> way, truth, or life, loss, lie, or death. Do y'all understand? There is no middle. Watch, Charlotte. This is so complicated. Where am I? This is Adam. Where am I going to go today? Oh, this is so deep. I'm going to get lost. Do you know why Adam and Eve didn't have no problems? Pre-fall. Now watch. This is heavy. You ready? Do, do I pre-fall? I'm Adam. Do I have free will? See, we act like free will got introduced, Tracy, after the fall. Because we only look at the choice. Oh, no, 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 no. I got free will, Pastor Kendra. I just don't have to use it. Mm. Mm. And you know what's wrong with all of us in this room? I told you today's hard. We all got free will and we use it. Watch, Jason, but you don't have to. If you get up, have communion with him. Yeah, but I got to go to work. I take it with you. Ah, I got to deal with my wife. I take it with you. I got to deal with these kids. I take it with you. I got to go to church. Take it with you. I got to have no business. Take it with you. Take it with you. Take it with you. Now watch this. If I take life, then good and evil don't matter. 
Because I have free will. Because he's good. And he didn't make me. But I don't have to use it if I'm with him. I hit your butt. Woo, Mark! Ah! Ah! That's so nasty. Adam named all, all the animals. And you can't pick a baby name. <laughs> Watch this, Victoria. They fighting over the baby name. I saw yesterday, Victoria, they had a, a thing on. A husband and wife was fighting because the wife wanted to name the baby the name of a goldfish. He said, this ain't a fish. This is a what person. And they just fighting. He named all the animals that we can't name a baby. Now, you, you're not listening. Watch this. Watch this, Dad. Big old animal with a big old neck. Adam looks at it. Giraffe. Jesus is standing over here. That's the name I had. Little thing comes across the stage, mama. It's called a cockalocha. Adam says, what's the toy, cockalocha? Jesus said, that's what I was going to call it. Hamster's running on a wheel and not going nowhere, Pastor Door. Adam says, stupid. No, I'm playing. <laughs> Everybody say exercise. He's running on the wheel, and, and Jesus said, I would have called it a hamster too. You have to listen to me. Pre-fall, Adam only knows life. He doesn't understand the concept of good and evil. They're sitting, Sebastian, in a tree. They're sitting in a tree together inside of one fruit. If you consume the fruit, it goes into the body. The fruit, oh, here's a revelation, kid, you ready? The fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil did not infect Adam's body, Avery. Didn't it affect the body? Didn't infect the body. What infected the body and the soul of Adam was the rebellion of doing it when God said no. No, y'all don't want today. Doing the opposite of what God said is sin. Sin opens the door always to death. It wasn't eating the fruit. It was choosing to eat the fruit. The choice, y'all got to hear me today. I'm off the notes. The choice was the rebellion, not the crunch. Prove it, Pastor Mark. Jesus said, you have said it's adultery when you lay down and smash. I say it's adultery when it starts in your heart. Uh, y'all don't want this. Sin, sin is never the act by itself. It's the choice that leads to the act. Are y'all listening? It's the choice. The act is the evidence you made the choice. Jesus said, stay with me. I'm the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. If you don't, you will be lost. You will live a lie, and then something will die. Adam and Eve walked with Jesus with free will. This is big, Tanya. But didn't have to use it to choose good or evil. The devil watched the daily communion, and he realized something. He knows he's worse than he was. And he said, if I'm worse, 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 if I'm worse 
than I was, Nicole, because I don't have daily communion. I don't bring praise and worship to God daily anymore. Watch, Brandy. I've been fired, and not only have I been fired, I don't have communion. I can go up and make reports, like in the book of Job, but I don't get to walk with Jesus no more. We used to walk and talk about what songs we were going to sing tomorrow. But I got fired, and I don't have communion. I have an idea. I see his creation, this dirt, with communion, so I'll break it. And if I don't feel like I used to feel, I know they won't either. He's only after your communion with Jesus, so Jesus is no longer the way. So here we go, quick. John 17, 3. And this is, read it with me on the count of three. One, two, three. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Who said this? It's weird. Who said this? Jesus, when he's talking in third person. Okay, you ready? Watch this. Today's some heavy, heavy, heavy. You ready? You know why he's talking in third person? He's moving in between the divine and his humanness. <laughs> he's a human talking with a human mouth, but he's moving in and out of his divine nature side. So he's talking as a man, but he's given a divine revelation of his divinity. So he says, and this is, he's telling you what eternal life is, right? So watch, we think eternal life <coughs> excuse me, is living forever. I'm going to break this down in a minute. Watch. It's not just living forever. Eternal life starts with knowing who the Father is, Bobby, and who His Son is. Then that equals eternal life. Are y'all ready for this? This is not in the notes. I'm off the notes. Watch. Knowing Jesus and knowing His Daddy, Janessa, is eternal life if you don't know Jesus and you don't know his daddy that is called eternal death but both of them are eternal so here's the revelation people don't die they just move You know, scientists will tell you that energy cannot be created or destroyed. Energy only changes form. Sometimes the energy stops producing so it's in an innate state, and sometimes it produces. Y'all got to hear me. Energy, when it's done doing this thing, it transforms or changes into doing something else. And sometimes the something else is nothing. You and I are somewhat like energy. You don't die. You just move. And the door, there are two doors upon your last breath. Eternal life or eternal damnation. Pastor Mark, why are you talking like this? Because we forgot the title of this. We forgot if it's not God, it's the devil. Oh, no, that's not scripture. Because the Bible say that it's the flesh, the world, and the devil. Okay, let's go back to the scripture then because you're messing with me now. Where did the flesh and the world come from? Yeah, see, you don't want me today. They both came from the other one, the devil. When he shut your spirit down through rebellion, he put the soul up front and the body number two turned off the spirit, Jennifer, number three. He created the concept of the flesh because the concept of the flesh is just a reordering. The word world is cosmos. Cosmos means arrangement. So he arranged your soul and body, Karen, to move together. He helped turn your spirit off by the rebellion to the father, the creator. So the world and the flesh both came from 
the devil's instructions and humans receiving his instruction. So it's only God or the devil. Today you're looking at me like you're looking at me because we live in the middle even though we don't want to admit we live in the middle. And what we don't want to do is choose this walk every day. We have been lied to that Sunday is enough. People got to beg you to come to church. People got to beg you to read your Bible. People got to beg you to worship. People got to beg you to pray. Why are we begging you to walk with life? Why are we begging you to walk with Jesus? Why are we begging you to have communion? Why are we begging you? Adam and Eve didn't beg. And he had the power to name every animal. So eternal life is knowing God in Jesus. Not Allah, not Buddha, not Holy Krishna, not all this scientist stuff. Pastor Mark, you can't talk like that because you know the condition of the world. The condition of the world is like it is because we don't talk like that. Look at your name and say, are you a middle liver? I thought my liver was over here. No, you live in the middle. And if I go and prepare a plate, are y'all learning something today? Thank you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, Jesus said, I will come again and I will receive you to myself. I don't know how to say this. I'm not going to preach no other message in this church, Kelly. You know what my message is? What's the word? Starts with a C. Communion. You do, you do. Victoria, they say to me, they say this to me all the time. You preach the same thing. Because there's no other thing. And you chasing preachers, preaching all kind of other stuff. No, I'm going to stay with this. I'm going to stay with this. Because my scripture says he's the way and the truth and the life. I don't know what other way you want me to preach. I will not. It's communion, period. If we had communion, we wouldn't be looking at that stuff in the Middle East. If we had communion, we wouldn't be looking at this stuff in politics. If we had communion, we'd have a speaker in the house and not, not one of the room. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. If we had communion, your house wouldn't look like that. If we had communion, my house wouldn't look like that. If we had communion, there wouldn't be all this nonsense. Adam and Eve broke communion. Then Jesus got to come back in Matthew 24 and say, here comes the end now. And when the end comes, it'll be wars and rumors of wars. It'll be death. It'll be poverty. Poverty, man will turn against man, women will turn against women, man will think he's a woman, woman will think he's a man, y'all kill baby. Jesus said, y'all are going to be tripping because you're lost. And you're lost because you believe a lie. So there is no other message when you come to Abundant Living Family Church, Jacob, high desert, other than communion. Do not, do not call me first. Call Jesus first. And then if you don't understand what Jesus is saying, call the office. And Pastor Dora will help you, okay? <laughs> See, I did that, Pastor Dora. Pastor Dora got 100 appointments next week. <laughs> and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. He just wants to always receive us to ourselves. Are y'all listening? He just wants to receive us to himself. He misses us. He wants us. He loves us. He just wants time. He just wants Twyla, our heart. He just wants you. He don't want you wanting everything else. And then when everything else you want don't work, then you want him. Don't nobody want to be the last person pick their kickball. Don't nobody want to be the last person pick their dodgeball. Don't Oh, nobody want to be the last person left on the wall and we treat Jesus like he's the worst player and he's got to be on the wall and then when there's no other choice you control your choice when you open up your eyes you control whether Facebook uh, meta is more important you control whether X on Twitter I mean X I don't know is more important before your feet hit the ground. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I invite you to my room. 
I invite you into my day. Thank you, Lord. Thank, before your feet hit the ground, thank you, Jesus. I woke up. I'm just thankful I woke up. I'm just thankful I got up. I'm thankful nobody ran in my house while I was asleep, screaming and shooting. I'm thankful that I woke up this morning and I had breath in my body. I'm thankful, Jesus, you have not let me down like I let you down. I'm thankful, Jesus, that you are with me. Your rod, your staff, they comfort me. I'm thankful you don't quit. I'm thankful you don't let me go. I am thankful before I put my foot on the ground. Ah! I'm thankful for life. Woo! I'm thankful you don't treat me like I treat you. I'm thankful that you open your arms regardless of my sin. I'm thankful, I'm thankful that you keep me in perfect peace so my mind can be stayed on you. I'm thankful before my foot hits the ground, I need to be in communion so I don't, so, no, not so I don't get attacked, so I can survive it. Because not being attacked ain't part of the thing. Jesus said, I'll give you houses, cars, clothes, cribs, and persecution. I will receive you to myself. This is all right, Pastor Kendra. That where I am, y'all, look at all the communion in here. That where I am, what? There you may be. What does he want? Watch, and where I go, you know. Watch this, Kendra, watch, watch. And I made it plain, Lola. If you, if you walk with me, why are you confused, Andrew, about where to go? That don't even make sense. If you walk with me, why are you confused about where to walk? You're confused because we only walk with him for 90 minutes on Sunday. And where you go, you know, and, and the way you know. So Thomas is us. Thomas is abundant living. Thomas is the modern-day Christian in 2023. Jesus said all that. Yeah, but. Everybody say but. Yeah, but. It's a big old but. Not the one you're thinking about. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. Jesus has been preaching for 14 chapters. <laughs> I'm leaving. I'm going to heaven. I'm coming back, Tanya. I'm leaving. I'm going to heaven. I'm coming back. We come to Abundant Living, hear scriptures every single Sunday, and then we come back, I do know. It's the truth. Lord, we don't know where you are going. And how can we know the way? Open your freaking ears and listen. How can we know the way? Listen. He just told you. So look at Jesus' response. Oh, I love this. Look at Jesus' response. Watch this, Janessa. Jesus said to him, you idiot. No. Jesus said to him, I am the way. I am the truth, and I am the, no one comes to the, so why is there religion? Then why, why is there religion? Because they're middle livers. Vic, a middle liver is somebody trying to excuse their living. Outside of scripture. Middle livers. So now I create religion so I can create how I live for the creator instead of Serena listening to the creator about how I should live. And I've created a middle 
And if it ain't God, it's the devil, Jennifer. Good to see you. If it ain't God, it's the devil. No, Jason, it's in the middle. No. And y'all don't realize how deep this message is because I can't mess with it because we're about out of time. Yeah, you don't. You don't realize how much me and you excuse the middle, Naomi. We, we excuse the middle and we act like there's a choice. Can I say this without you freaking out and emailing me? No, I, I'm going to say it, but you're going to go, oh. Watch this, kid. You ready? Ready? There is no choice. There's only free will. Oh. There, there is no, Laura, there's no choice. There's only free will. With your free will, you have the system of choosing. But there isn't a choice. If you have revelation. Adam and Eve, Margie, were doing fine with their free, with their free will and not choosing. Are y'all listening? They were fine. You notice the garden wasn't in an upheaval. You notice there was no murder. You notice brother didn't kill brother. Do you, is somebody going to talk to me? Do you notice they weren't homeless? They became homeless. They got kicked out of the garden. Are y'all listening? Do you, there was no issues until they start choosing. Because they were choosing with something other than revelation. This is heavy today, huh? Something other than revelation. They got this faux, F-A-U-X, like that purse you got, faux. It say MK. It's Michael Cord, K O R D. <laughs> the men are going. What are you talking about? Forget it. It's a fake choice, Bernard. It's a fake choice. Are y'all listening? Hold your free will, and just walk with life. Brooke, that's good. Just. Hold your free will. Hold it. Hold your stuff. Hold your water and walk with life. Just walk with life. Mm. Let's end it up. So life, Kendra, was enough before the knowledge of good and evil was downloaded. Are y'all listening? I'm only trying to take you back pre-fall. Jesus restored pre-fall. Jesus comes, Dad, and we still live post-fall, but we talk about pre-fall. Eternal life is the Greek word aeon. Say aeon. Uh, the average way that people will interpret it, Hushua, is age. A-G-E. This is the age. Aeon is not age, really. So here's what eternal life means. Watch, Kim. This is deep. It means vitality. It means to live. It means forever. It means forever. Watch. It means perpetual. This is crazy. You ready? Ready, Bobby? The word eternal life, aeon, Literally embedded, Sebastian, in the meaning. Embedded in the meaning, it literally means past and future. The, I don't have time to mess with this today. This word means past and future simultaneously, Latoya. Simultaneously. So God says, you guys live in life. I'm eternal life. And if you know me, come on, John 14, 3. Yeah, 17, 3. If you know me and Jesus... You have access, Natasha, you have access to the past and the future. The future is what I call apocalypto, which is revelation, which means to take the lid off and to disclose something that is hidden. If you know me and you know Jesus and you walk with us and not Facebook and you walk with us and not X and you walk with us and not Democrats and you walk with us and not Republicans and you walk with us and not the pastor, if you walk with me and my son, you will have access to your past where I'll heal you. Oh, y'all don't want today. And you'll have access to your future where you don't have to keep getting hurt again. You get hurt again because you don't heal the past. 
So you go from one toxic relationship to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next, because you don't know me or my daddy. And because that's because you don't walk with me or my daddy, you just walk with Pastor Mark for 90 minutes, and it better be 90 on Sunday. You don't pick me up and read me, Jesus said. You think... So you don't know me. Jesus said, if you know me and you love me, you'll keep my commandments. But you still fornicate. You still lie. You still cheat. You still commit adultery. You still addicted to porn. You still don't read. You still don't pray. You still think a man is a woman and a woman is a man. You still think this and you still think that. You still think it's okay to pull a lever for somebody that kills babies. But then you say you're not for abortion. But you elect a politician because of your grandmother's party that supports abortion. Yeah, I said it, Democrats. <laughs> Oh, just swallow, swallow. Just swallow. I'm almost done. And then you fake Republicans ain't got no. Look, Victoria, I'm making a snowman. I'm making a snowman. Hey, Brooke, are we off yet? Did they cut it off? Hey, did Meta cut it off yet? Watch quick! Past and future. Kendra, it means begin without an end. Eternal life means begin without an end. That's why I said you can't die. You just move. You move. And the backwards truth is, if you don't accept Jesus and his dad, you don't go to eternal life, you go to eternal death. You go to eternal damnation. Way, hodos, the Greek, a road, a route, a mode, or a means, or a journey. Jesus said, I am the means to get to my dad. That's what cancels out other religions. Last point, and I kind of already said it because I got excited. Pre-fall Adam didn't have to exercise a choice, and neither do you. Are y'all listening? You don't. You don't. I got to exercise a choice because my husband and my wife, they're acting crazy. I don't know what I'm going to do. I ain't happy no more. I stood up in here. I didn't say for better or for worse. I said, if you make me happy, I'll stay. That's what I said. You know what? In a marriage, are y'all going to look at me stupid? You don't have to choose. You have to hold your free will. Now, the other person might choose. That's a different sermon. You don't. You don't have to be guilty before judging God. Who will judge? You can hold your free will and walk with Jesus and say, Jesus, I love them. It don't seem like they love me. Jesus, I love my kids. It don't seem like they love me or appreciate me. But Jesus, I'm going to walk with you, and I'm going to do what you do. And you said no divorce unless their hearts are hardened. And Jesus, Ezekiel 38, says, turn my heart of flesh, uh, turn my heart of stone to my heart of flesh. So Jesus, I'm going to walk with you, Amos 3.3. 3. I'm going to walk with you, and we're going to be in agreement. And I'm going to make sure that whatever choice I make is anchored in Scripture. If my choice is not anchored in Scripture, then my choice is not life. My choice is just good. And I'm not going to whine when my good choice still leads to death. Adam had free will. Hold your will. Look at your neighbor and say, hold your will. He lived in life, which was Jesus. The knowledge of good and evil forced him to now exercise the choice but the choice is not 100% life. Do you understand? That's why we're in trouble. Sherry, it's not 100% life. And God knew Adam and his descendants would choose good and then choose evil and then choose good back and forth. And the Bible says if you break one piece of the law, you've broken all the law. So Karen, we could choose good a thousand times and that's good. But the minute we choose evil, it breaks all, Matt, it breaks all the good. 
Are y'all listening? And then you and I are guilty of eternal death. So God sent his one and only begotten son that whoever believes in him, Jesus, will not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus came to restore the option of life. We must choose it daily, just not Sunday. Come on, give him a shout.